Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. Today we're going to be looking at Svelte and SvelteKit, and we're going to be going ahead and looking at protected layouts. Now this time, instead of doing it like we did last time via some additional file that used a slot, which is fine for people who are JavaScript enabled, um, we're going to go ahead and use load with endpoints and hooks, and we're going to make sure, and a little bit of cookies, and that'll allow us to do it for people who have no JavaScript as well as JavaScript on. So let's go ahead and take a look at our demo first. So as you recall, the sign about page here is protected. And I can sign in. I have JavaScript off over here. And now I can get to these pages. And that's the, the big thing, the big difference. So let's go ahead and see how we accomplish that. So we've changed a, a few things uh, in a few areas. So let's go ahead and actually first look I've removed the user, uh, the logged in and the user ID stores because those are going to be no longer necessary. Inside of the helpers here, this is going. This protected redirect says if no session logged in, redirect. Otherwise, return some base. And this should probably be given a default value, but this would just be something like that. So this is going to redirect for some given route. And we'll be using that within the load function. The protected layout, this is what it looked like before, if you recall, is checking the user store and going to user sign in. So this function is going to replace this layout. So we can go ahead and see how we navigate and use all of that. So the first thing first is we'll just kind of bounce around a few spots. Let's see how we use it on the About page and the Settings page. So we import Protected Redirect from Lib Shared Helpers. And then in our load here, we're going to give it the Protected Redirect. We're going to send it to the session, and then just give it that base of where we want it to return to uh, else. And we return that. And now we don't have to have a wrapper around our page. We're going to do the same thing within our settings here. Now, as you recall, the settings is using that user.user .user, uh, store. And so we need to set that. So within our hooks here, we need to have that user object available to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to have add cookies for that user ID, user name display, and set up all those for this particular store. Now, those are going to be hooked into the session, which means they're available in our layout. So we have our user store here, and we're going to go set those to our user store right here. And so the user has access to those for non-JavaScript users. So that page will load just fine. So we have a couple additional cookies, but um, and like I said, you could probably throw those all in one. You could split it. You could go ahead and throw it in one and hash it and unhash it if you want, however you want to store those. It's just easy uh, enough for me, I, I think, to go ahead and display these out. It's not like if you change them, it, it does anything as the end user. So you could see username over here is tester1, display name is test1, and then my user ID is 20. So that's how you could do these two. Anywhere that was using the logged in before is now going to be session logged in, because that's available within that hook. Uh, so we have, or we had it already available in here, user ID as well as logged in. So we can be using this store rather than using our own stores. Same thing in the index here. We no longer have that user ID. We're going to be going ahead and grabbing anything that anywhere that we had logged in. Actually, yeah, this one didn't use user ID, it used logged in. Say, so, so this is not logged in. We're going to make sure that we are hiding things appropriately. In the sign in and sign out endpoints, we need to make sure we add those cookies that are now needed. For sign in, and then for sign out, we want to make sure we clear them appropriately. And then again, anywhere we're using the old logged in or the uh, user ID, will be session instead. So this used to look like this. 
but now it's within the session store. So not a big change, but since the store is already available to us and since we're already using it, there's no reason to have duplicate stores. And then in our sign in, we need to make sure that we are updating that uh, session with that user ID as well as that logged in value. And this is for people who have JavaScript enabled. We need to go ahead and make sure we set these. Otherwise, they won't be set for when we navigate to these other pages. And we're checking against those values within the session store. And then again, in the nav, for the logging out, we want to make sure we clear those values for logged in and user ID in the session store. And our hiddens are, again, on the session. So pretty simple. Again, uh, maybe a little more complex, because I kind of integrated the session information into this episode, but uh, maybe a little more complex, depending on your use case. You know, Do you need to support non-JavaScript users, yes or no? I think this is a little bit nicer. And you can do, you actually get the proper redirect uh, a little bit better. Um, Though if you wanted to have it, you know, throw up a different loader and then give a different kind of error, error message, it might be better for you to do the other way. But I'll be sticking with this way uh, moving forward. So if you kind of like this type of content, that would be fantastic. Like and subscribe. Um, support me on Patreon, if you will, or buy me a coffee. And I really appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.